Hi, what's up my toxic gamers and single chats? How are y'all doing? So this year has been absolutely wild to say the least, okay? We're hearing that we're gonna be getting the GTA 6 trailer. It is happening, my brothers! It is happening this month! We also have Activision, Sledgehammer My Ball, Sledgehammer Games, they are saying they are gonna be they're gonna be addressing the skill-based management. Oh, Swag broke the news. We have PlayStation getting sued as well. The government trying to shut them down. Bruh. We have Sony Ponies, the Xbox starting another war, which we absolutely love to see. Brothers can never get along. So we got a whole lot of toxic gamers. We even have Bethesda! And they went crazy at the toxic gamers. They say gamers are toxic. They are calling all reviewers to be like toxic gamers uh, if they fall under uh, somebody that actually gave the rating below 7 mm -hmm. on Starfield Ride. Right? They just say gamers are bad. Gamers are toxic there's a whole lot of drama going around we're gonna get into the story like this video subscribe if you're brand new and guys don't just a pom pom check this, this out this year isn't even over by the way very soon we've got the avatar game coming as Damn. well as the day before gonna be very interested to see the day before really real like dead ass though and, and as a brown man I, I don't know whatever happened to that abandoned game though like any any of you still remember listen man as a brown man, I wanna see what happened. Now, don't give me that yo skizzle. It just got abandoned. Get it? Like it's abandoned and it got abandoned. I mean, come bruh. on, bruh. Whatever happened to that game, bro? It had. It even had a demo on PlayStation, bro. Yeah, that one shakes out. Things are slowing down for sure, but they aren't done yet, and that means we're here to cover it. Just in case you clicked GTA on the wrong 6. video, this is this week in video games. And here comes the news. It's been a bit of a rough year for Todd. Starfield is the first new IP from Bethesda in like 25 years. Yeah, and it launched triumphantly to a brilliant critical reception. It was when everybody else got their hands on the game that the wheels started falling off the old spaceship, with many expressing disappointment at Starfield's story, exploration, <laughs> quality of life issues, Yo. and a general sense that this one just wasn't- Yo, Starfield WRL, is it is it game of the year contender though? Is it game of the year contender? Y'all yeah. sickers believe that it should win game of the year, or y'all think it shouldn't now? I'm gonna say I'm just gonna be I'm gonna be controversial yet so brave. I don't think it's game of the year, bro. It is not. Like let's let's be real, yeah. guys. Like it is not game of the year. It is it is decent though. Now you can certainly see that it is a very decent game, and it can certainly be subjectively it can be your game of the year. But objectively speaking, nah, bro. It's like far from being game of the year. And just because you say that, the Bethesda devs gonna be mad. And indeed, they got mad. Hitting the mark. It got so bad that the game recently fell below 50% positive reviews on Steam, though Holy. that number has rebounded recently after what? a Steam sale welcomed in a number of new players. Still, there remains a sense that Starfield is just a little bit disappointing, and so Damn. Bethesda have trotted out an all-new strategy to improve player sentiment, telling them that they're wrong, and that Starfield <laughs> is good, actually. Yo, well, you know what? We're gonna laugh and sing, guys, in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. <laughs> This is real, but I struggle to believe it. It was spotted by Juicehead. They noted that Bethesda have Crazy begun responding man. to negative Steam reviews, and the responses are pretty good. One review can- Bro, I swear to God, these devs, I hope they get hit by a family full of cactus, okay? I Bruh. hope they accidentally sit with their balls on the family full of cactus in their dream. I'm not the savage though, okay? Only in their dreams. I get I hope they get hit by a family full of cactus, bruh. Complained about Starfield's famed penchant for loading screens, to which a Bethesda representative responded, quote, Consider the amount of data for the expansive gameplay that is procedurally generated to load flawlessly in under three seconds. We believe that this shortcoming will not hinder our players from getting lost in the world we've created, Yay. end quote. Uh, but, what, but what? But what if the world gets lost, though, right? Like, what if I get get lost in the world and I do not know how to come out? I'm not talking about being lost as though I'm not sure what's happening around the world. I'm so lost in the story. The story is amazing. But what if I'm like dead ass lost in the game and I get hit by, by like a like a loading screen because it's like the star loading field, right? Uh, well, obviously, it did hinder that person's enjoyment. That's why they said as much in a review. So just saying that These it wouldn't crazy, doesn't change bro. that. Another review called Starfield's story generic and its gameplay boring, to which a Bethesda representative enthusiastically responded, You can fly, you can shoot, you can mine, you can loot. Starfield is an RPG with hundreds of hours of quests to complete and characters to meet. Most quests will also vary on your character's skills and decisions, massively changing the outcome of your playthrough. Try creating different characters with backgrounds and characteristics that clash or are opposite of your previous character. You'll feel like you're playing a totally different game. If delusion was 
was a was a dev though. I swear yeah, to God, go, go, man, go. these devs need their ass beat up right now. Like, oh my God, bro, in GTK though, only in GTK. The the fact that you suckers cannot take criticism, and I mean suckers aren't even giving your game like three out of tens or one. I mean, yeah, there are some people giving it zero out of one or zero out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> one out of ten. I get it. There are some suckers that are giving it and genuinely though this game is not one out of ten It's not a ten out of ten Most people most rational people are either giving it four five six or seven Okay, and I think it's justified. We're all different. We all have different opinions. We all got different takes I mean, wow Wow shocker right shocker. We all have different takes and different opinions based on you know the experience one might have They're gonna either give it 10 out of 10 1 out of 10. I mean 1 out of 10. That's like not fair um, I don't think it deserved 1 out of 10, but but like damn bro. You're a deb You should be listening to the feedback. You should be doing what your customers ask you bro Whatever happened to customer always right right now. It's like th these seconds. I mean this is not just Bethesda This is literally with everybody so much so that we all know what happened with Call of Duty, what's happening with Call of Duty for four years. This second, this joint had crazy amount of skill based matchmaking. And here, four years later, after many attempts, after community complaining for years and years, four years later, this is what Swag gotta say. Roll it. Volume? Oh no, it doesn't have volume. My bad, boys. Check this. This one has. I don't know when they're gonna do this, but they told us that for the first time in history. First time in history. Come on, they're Swag. Be talking about matchmaking. Yeah, they're gonna be talking about matchmaking, boys. Finally, give it up for them, boys. For the first time ever, they're gonna be addressing skill-based matchmaking. I gotta say, shout out to them. <laughs> Finally, something is going to happen, right? Because for years and years, these seconds denied the existence of skill-based matchmaking. They were dunking on the player base. The entire reason we're now getting to finally hear about skill-based matchmaking. And it's probably not going to be like, hey, we're removing we're removing the skill-based matchmaking. It's finally not going to be that good, though. If that happens, that would be absolutely beautiful. But the, the entire reason they're even touching and officially going to talk about it and talking about it is because the player count did. The pl people are not buying the way they used to buy Call of Duty back in the days. This is the entire reason. So, uh, do you do you guys at Bethesda really want to see that happen to Starfield and your future games? No, right? So start listening to your fan base. End quote. I don't quite know what to say to that one. My favorite though was a review that complained about all of the empty planets in Starfield. They obviously weren't fans of Bethesda's procedural generation model, but the truth is, they just didn't get it. Luckily, Bethesda are here to tell them how they should feel. Quote, we are sorry that you do not like landing on different planets and are finding many of them empty. Some of Starfield's planets Bruh. are meant to be empty by design, Dang. but that's not boring. When no astronauts mouth. went to the moon, there was nothing there. They run. According to Alex Jones, uh, they, they, there's like a far side on the moon where they found aliens. There, there are aliens. The the astronauts saw something, and the the, the moon landing was fake. The, they they shot it in uh, in a Hollywood uh, green screen CGI room. It's all CGI. Yo, how many of you guys actually believe now? That's like a different topic completely. Like, wow, that's completely different topic. Okay, we should stick to gaming certainly weren't bored, end quote. Yeah, because they are on the fucking moon! It is a truly baffling set of responses from what we assume is Bethesda customer support, the team who made headlines years ago with the Fallout 76 canvas bag controversy, <laughs> where they were like, yeah, there was a mix up with the bag, we aren't planning on doing anything about it. Yeah. I appreciate their love of product, it's nice to see them going into- Whenever I hear about Fallout 76 bag, I get reminded of Young, yeah, with that do -dum, do -dum, do -dum, do -dum. I got the PTSD, I got the massive flashbacks with that on Starfield's behalf. But when it comes to changing player perception, let's get a few more game patches and a little less gaslighting. Yeah. Oh Toxic man, gamers. that was one hell of a story. Moving right along, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 has only just recently disappointed fans, but Activision are getting ready to disappoint fans all over again with next year's- Yes! Iteration. Yes! We love to be disappointed, but listen man, the situation is so wild that these suckers are even talking about- they're gonna talk about skill-based matchmaking though. But new Call of Duty leak, oh hell yeah. This week, Windows Central got an exclusive scoop when they reported the first details of COD 2024, which if this reporting is accurate, is going to be a Black Ops game set during the Gulf War in the early 90s. How many of you guys think that next year's Call of Duty game is gonna save Call of Duty? 
bruh. We always say that, and listen, I know, guys, like, I'm gonna go in that route as well, but I do believe that next year's Call of Duty is gonna save Call of Duty. At least I hope so. I hope that it saves Call of Duty because, uh, yeah, I, 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 I'm a fan of Treyarch. And also, for the longest amount of time, I don't think there hasn't has been a single Call of Duty game made by Treyarch that has been all like a colossal failure and like really, really disappointing, really, really bad. Although Black Ops 4 was disappointing, no campaign, but, but you know they made it up for that with four zombie maps at launch. And yeah, the the zombie maps were disappointing in comparison to Black Ops 3 zombies and Black Ops 2 zombies. But looking back, I mean, it was amazing though. Like, damn, we had the pausing. Button button in the game right that is something that we do not get nowadays something that the devs <laughs> it's absolutely pathetic these devs say that they cannot have a pausing button Bruh. call of duty van garbage zombies didn't have a pausing button guys like crazy i know like i cannot even compute that then later on they added like a two hours uh, pausing feature like what you say it's crazy we are in the year 2023, yeah, like by, uh, when Van Garbage came out, we were in 2021, but listen, you could have paused even in Call of Duty World at War, you could have paused, that game came out in 2008, bruh, so my point here is that track is, in my opinion, it's very good, and uh, their last game was Black Ops Cold War, right, so by the time we get Call of Duty 2024, it's gonna be four years, and this is what we're hearing that it's gonna be set in Gulf War during the early 90s, I wish it was like near futuristic, but, but, but the situation here is that by the time that game comes out, it's gonna be four years though that it was gonna be in production, so four years, I, 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 there is no way they can flop this, if they flop with this game, then it's Joe over, one last time, I guess I'm excited for Call of Duty one more time, but, but yeah, you also guys believe that it's gonna save Call of Duty? We know Central claim that Treyarch are leading the development of this title and that it will again focus on the more clandestine aspects of warfare and intelligence gathering, similar to the way the Cold War campaign did a while back. And not for nothing, but that was a pretty good campaign. I actually enjoyed it. It was actually decent. It was way better than Modern Warfare 3. That was only three hours long and uh, it didn't even felt like a campaign. Bruh. It felt like a Brow Warfare 3, Clown Warfare 3, let's be real. But, and also another factor and another truth here is that Black Ops Cold War, it should have, it was meant to come out in in 2021. In 2020, we were supposed to get Call of Duty Van Garbage from Sledgehammer My Balls, but they shies the bed. We were also in a Roni situation, Pandarmic. Uh, and, and during that pressure, under that stress though, Trex still made a very decent game. I played it last night. It actually, actually pretty good. I skipped on Modern Warfare 3. I'm playing old Call of Duty game and it's pretty good. Enjoyed that one. Given the setting and timeline, the game will apparently lean more into traditional military technology rather than the future tech we've seen in more recent releases, and apparently they're shooting for a more nuanced narrative of the Gulf War, and I'm going to be very interested to see how Activision apply their deft touch to that period of history. Outside yeah, of these we're probably going to see George Bush, right? In French, there's a, a saying, George Bush Femta Bush, which means George Bush, close your mouth in French. I mean, it's a brand. I, I, I know, I know, guys. Things, the rumors get a little more shaky with rumors of returning maps from previous Black Ops games, as well as a rather lengthy early access period for people who pre-order or buy the deluxe edition. This stuff's all very likely to get firmed up closer to launch, but for now that Gulf War setting looks to be a lock, and if Activision can repeat some of the stuff they did with the Black Ops Cold War release, then hopefully this will get a better reception than Modern Warfare 3 did. Though yeah, to be fair, hopefully, that is a hopefully. very, very low bar. But to clear, the game currently sits <laughs> yeah. at a mixed 41% on Steam Damn. and a weak 58 on Open Critic. Make yeah, honestly, bro, Modern Warfare 3 could have been like $40 most, or they could have dead ass made and called it like Modern Warfare 2 DLC and all the content that we're getting. If that came in Modern Warfare 2022, it would have received very well. Could you imagine? Could you imagine? I know the Bruna is fat, guys. Uh, don't chase the pom pom, guys. Stay focused. We must stay focused. I mean, Lara Croft, I mean, listen, man, she a baddie, though, but stay focused. Making it one of the lowest rated COD games in history, Bobby Kotick's parting gift to Phil Spencer. All class right to the end. One game that didn't disappoint fans or critics was Alan Wake 2, but the question is how many people are playing it? Well, we don't know the answer to that definitively for a variety of reasons, but Sakana is a games industry analytics organization, and according to their measures, Alan Wake 2 did not feature in the top 150 games for October if- Damn. 
And I heard really good things about Alan Wake 2. How many of you guys purchased? I personally did not. Uh, I was on vacay. I was in my home country, Pakistan, and I didn't have my Sony Pony 5, my PlayStation 5. Uh, and I wanted to purchase, uh, indeed wanted to purchase Spider-Man 2. But, you know, I was on vacay, didn't have my Sony Pony 5. So instead of buying the game, I just purchased, uh, or instead of buying the game, I just ended up watching the entire walkthrough as a movie on YouTube for Spider-Man 2. And I loved it. I actually loved it, though. I watched it for free. And I loved it, my brothers. But if I was here in uh, in Canada, like I am right now, I probably would have purchased, probably would have streamed as well. Uh, my point, the, the 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 point that I'm trying to make here is that it's a single player game, and it's one of those things, right? Like I love single player games, but it's just. The, the fact of the matter here is that you're only gonna play once maybe you're gonna play for the second time like a year later two years later spider-man is one of those games that i played for the first time then didn't touch it for two years then got back and played i'm talking about the spider-man 2018 and i love that game i love spider-man 2 as well i watched the walkthrough but the point here is that it's single player games and Th that's the thing though people don't treat single player games uh, the way they treat multiplayer games right but but if i have to take a guess like by the end of its life cycle in a long run i think it can easily do 10 million for sure if you look at monthly active users. This data comes from Matt Piscatella, who often provides fascinating insight into this stuff. He confirmed that the game did not feature in the top 150 most played games for both PS5 or Xbox Series consoles, though he did That's know sad, that the though. game released late in October, and with a metric like that, timing certainly matters. Yeah. Having said that- But it's genuinely sad to see this because I heard nothing but good things about this game. Even I did not purchase, maybe I'll get it like later down the road. The, the sad reality here is that Modern Warfare 3 is gonna turn out to be the best selling game and we all know it's like a patch. It's it's a patch guys, it's not even a DLC. $70 for bullish eyes, right? And games like that which obviously, you know, uh, real acting went in, we had like real dialogues, uh, real... Uh, uh, they, they put in a lot of energy, a lot of time. Um, and, and a lot of work in developing that narrative and I heard that the game is uh, the, the narrative is actually good It's a horror game a crime thriller as well horror thriller a spin on crime thriller with horror aspect It cannot go wrong. It just cannot go wrong and a lot of people I heard nothing but good things about it But the, the, the hearing that it didn't sell that well, that's like genuinely sad and seeing Modern Warfare 3 I mean damn bro. There were a number of things that would have held Alan Wake 2 back from being a success the big one is the fact that it's an Epic exclusive, and setting aside any issues you might have had with that storefront, the reality is that Epic exclusives simply don't sell as well as games that are also available on Steam, and that's just a fact. Similarly, and I think even more disappointingly, Alan Wake 2 did not get a physical release for consoles. Now, Alan Wake yeah. 2 is a proper video game made for proper nerds, like myself and probably you if you watch this channel. For many of these people, physical media matters, and I definitely heard from a bunch of people who would have loved to have purchased Alan Wake 2, but wouldn't do so because they only buy physical. Fair enough, Dang I say. On. These moves seem like such a silly- no! Uh, yeah, I mean, listen, there's always going to be demand for physical media, and I do believe that we should stay, we should stay with the physical media, because there are a lot of advantages with the physical media. Oh, number A, number one, okay, number, number A, okay, let's just keep it like that. Bruh. Number A, once you purchase the game, it is yours, it is yours, uh, although they can always do a thing where, hey, you cannot play the game unless you patch it, unless you have the internet connection, they can always do that. But number B, the most important one, you can always sell the game. At least sell it as used copy and you're gonna get your money back, not all of it, not the shandy dollars, but at least you can get 50, maybe even 40, hell, even 30 is gonna be better than nothing, right? In the long run, if you're selling it like a year, two years, three years later, you can always sell it, but if you buy it digitally though, you do not have that luxury, you can never sell it, and once you download one kilobyte at least on the PlayStation, I know on Steam it's two hours, you have the two hours limit, you can play for an hour and 59 minutes, you don't like it, you get a refund, simple as that. On Xbox, I'm not sure, but on Sony Pony, you download one kilobyte, you download one kilobyte on PlayStation, and there goes, you can never never get your money back so this is why i don't like digital but as a as a youtuber if i want to stream the game i have no other option but to purchase digitally and and i'm i'm noticing this a lot a lot of people don't care a lot of people just buy digitally they're like yeah i'm just gonna pre-download play the game at midnight it's easy don't have to go outside don't have to worry about buying the copies uh and digital never runs out right it's not like hey it's like limited copies it's unlimited digital is unlimited 
and they make a ton of mo ton more money when you buy digitally because they don't have to worry about the cost associated by releasing the the copies in a physical manner in a box they don't have to worry about shipping the games out to your local uh, like GameStop or Best Buy or whatever or wherever you get the, your games from in physical form uh, I, yeah, I don't think there are that many people that are like, hey, I want to get fiscal, fiscal, fiscal. Personally, the way it's going, I don't know, though. Silly self-owned for Epic. Like, yeah, I get it. You want the Epic Game Store to turn a profit one day eventually through exclusives. But your publishing effort should surely be storefront agnostic some of the time. Alloway 2 is not the sort of game that is going to win you market share in the battle against Valve. It's Fortnite that's going to do that, as well as all the Fortnite creator stuff that's on the way. Just put Alan Wake out on Steam. Crazy. People will buy it and you will make more money. Same goes for the physical release. Setting aside the fact that Alan Wake 2 is the type of game that appeals to people who want to buy physical editions, it's also just a shitty trend. All digital releases make sense in the case of cash-strapped indies, but if Epic can afford to get Eminem into Fortnite, they can afford to get Alan Alan Wake 2 onto retail shelves. Sorry yeah. for ranting, but to be honest, it just gets me. Because that, that is insane that Fortnite is still killing it years later, and they, these things got Eminem on it. Alan Wake 2 is actually an incredible video game, like a truly remarkable feat of game making, and it deserves to be selling like 20 million units. No way should we be reading a headline that says Alan Wake 2 isn't in the top 150 games Crazy. of its release yeah, that's month. Sad, though. I really hope Epic do an about face on this stuff and get the game out there on more. Yeah, they should get it on physical. I mean, there is always a market uh, for physical and once it's out on physical sick is gonna buy it no doubt about it i'm not saying that physical don't matter even i want i want the games uh to stay physical as well but let's be real the way it's going man mm, i don't know man i'm not sure maybe like like he's saying the target audience is much more mature and they yeah i, I do believe in that the target audience is much more mature and they would probably go for physical edition rather than digital, but I don't know if I believe that 100% though. I, I, I don't know. I, I think the reach of Alan Wake isn't too crazy. Uh, n no hating, not hating though, but I, I do believe that uh, the reach isn't that big. All platforms and on retail Sadly. shelves because Remedy did something really special here and commercial decisions shouldn't be what's holding people back from experiencing it. One final bit of Remedy news, they recently provided an update on one of their in-development projects because don't forget Next Remedy thing? have like three projects in the works at the moment. Yeah, what have this we one's codenamed Project Vanguard and it was meant to be a cooperative free-to-play game published by Tencent. So what's happening right now is that the free-to-play market is changing quite a bit and you're seeing games either get cancelled or pivot back to the premium model. Hyenas is a good example of that. Sega dumped a truckload of money into that on the assumption that it was going to be a free-to-play title, but eventually they hinted that it would likely be a premium box product. In the end, they canned it entirely. Disney's Dreamlight Valley is another example. This has been in early access for a while now and was- Yeah, whatever happened to uh, Max Payne? We did hear that Max Payne is in development. Uh, whatever, also, whatever happened to that Dokubi though? When I look at this game, I get reminded of that Dokubi game, which I called it like the kids GTA type game, right? It actually looked hella fun though. I believe it was revealed two years ago at this point. It's been crazy, bruh. To be a free-to-play game when it launches next week, now it will be a premium title, but it will still have microtransactions, of course. It is, after all, published by Gameloft. Obviously, Remedy are taking stock of these changes because this week they announced that Vanguard is being rebooted. It will no longer be a free-to-play title and will instead be a premium title, one that, quote, will lean more into Remedy's core strengths and be built on many of the features, assets, and themes already designed for Vanguard, end quote. They'd go on to reiterate that they're looking to bring their unique touch to the cooperative multiplayer format and i'm interested in that though i do wonder what the final business model for this one ends up being we won't find out for a while though vanguard is going back to the proof of concept stage so don't expect to see this before like 2028 and that feels really <laughs> far away but in game dev terms it's yo by then i'm probably gonna have a football team though i'll probably have a football team i'll bruh. make like a soccer team with the waifu though like bruh like not even a full game dev cycle speaking of which bioware are already hyping up the next mass effect game but you shouldn't be holding your breath for it bioware did recently put out a teaser trailer for it which didn't reveal very much to be honest and teaser trailers usually hint that the marketing cycle is about to kick off that's unlikely to be the case if recent reporting from Jeff Grubb and- Bro, like, what the actual F though, like, whether you're a fan or not, 2029? 20, 
You crazy man! What? Are, when is Elder Scrolls 6 gonna come out, dude? 2029 in gamer terms and in, in, in like video games, that's like eternity. That's like millennia, bro. Like uh, we are what? Like we're about to be 2024. So five years later, and let's be real, games usually come out by the end of uh, the year, right? Especially bigger games like that. And we know it's EA, uh, not a full game at launch. 2029, you say it's crazy, you say it's crazy, man, six years from now, you kill, kill me now, and by, if, in six years time, the project is most probably gonna be cancelled, let's be real, to let's be real. Sane is to be believed. They were speaking during Jeff's Game Mess Morning podcast, and Jeff had this to say, quote, you want some original reporting? This game is just nowhere near coming out. I was told that when they revealed Dragon Age Dreadwolf in 2018, this is similar in terms of timeline. That was Bruh. announced in 2018, and we're not getting that game until maybe next year. So now do the math for that, and we're talking 2029 for Mass Effect 5, end quote. Oof. Tamor agreed, saying, quote, I've heard some things as well, and this game is so far away, it's in another galaxy right now, end quote. <laughs> Yo, kind of a pun aside, this is definitely ass. disappointing dead news, ass. but not altogether unsurprising. Bioware are still deep in Dragon Age Dreadwolf development, with that project being delayed internally multiple times and no release date in sight. We're guessing it's 2024, but given how tight-lipped Bioware are about it, that's far from being a sure thing. If your average AAA game takes five plus years to develop- Okay, I'm not 100% sure but with Bioware right now. Aren't their games actually good though? Didn't we have like a controversy with them? Did it, did it actually have a controversy with their last game or something? I don't remember because, whoa, shocker, right? There has been so many games that came out recently <laughs> that had a ton of controversy. Bruh. My bad, I had to burp, you know, I had to let that air out. But, but there has been a ton of controversies with so many games, Cyberpunk, uh, 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 literally every game though, like Call of Duty, GTA Trilogy, the Defective Edition, Anthem, that was years and years ago, uh, Call of Duty Van Garbage, bruh, and I, I do believe that this game, like Starfield as well, Starfield is now having that actually, it didn't, it wasn't received that poorly, Golem as well, right, <laughs> yo Golem did, did receive it poorly, Halo as well, Damn, man, literally uh, every game that comes out nowadays is unfinished at launch, though. So I'm not sure. I wouldn't be shocked if this this game had a, controvers a controversial past. Then Jeff's 2029 guess doesn't sound too outlandish. I must say, though, I get kind of annoyed when I see companies teasing stuff that's this far out. Todd announcing the Elder Scrolls 6 yeah, a exactly. full decade before it's likely to come out was a real low point for the industry, and it sucks to see other developers following suit. When you've got Man. something to show, show it, but kindly refrain from hyped up logo reviews reveals and teaser trailers because all they do is create false expectations and ultimately disappointment. Speaking of disappointment, Ubisoft. Yay! No, I'm just kidding. They're all right sometimes. Not today though. Did you see this bullshit with the whole in-game ads that pop up when you open the menu Bruh. thing? Okay, it's not quite Bruh. as bad as it sounds so long as you're willing to buy Ubisoft's explanation of it all. But I don't know, you could put me in the skeptical column for this one. So what happened is that someone was playing Assassin's Creed Odyssey and they pressed the map button to, you know, bring up the map. Instead, yeah. what they got was an ad for Assassin's Creed Mirage. Bomba cut! There we go, boys. Minus 20% Black Friday sale by now. <laughs> Yeah, this is this is insane though, and these things definitely want to see more ads. They want to promote more ads. They want gamers to see more ads because yeah, that's what we like, right? Like gamers hate playing video games. They, they love seeing ads. They love seeing the trailers. They love buying games, but they hate playing, right? Toxic gamers, right? Am I right, guys? With Ubisoft trying to spruik a 20% Ubi discount for Black Friday, it wow. popped up for just a moment and then disappeared. Just because Sega's are playing your games, bro, they should get a 100% discount, though. ...appeared to reveal the map. Like the video if you agree. So at first, everyone was like, classic Ubisoft. There was like no doubt that this was what it appeared to be because it just felt like such a Ubisoft move. However, Ubisoft would later go on to clarify that this was not some new form of invasive in-game advertising, but rather a bug. According to Ubisoft, quote, our intention was to display a promotion for Assassin's Creed Mirage as part of the franchise news in the main menu of other Assassin's Creed games. Unfortunately, this technical error caused the promotion to appear in one of our in-game menus in- Bomboka! We absolutely believe the lies. We believe the lies. Dead. 
we want to ensure the best player experience possible, and these disruptive pop-ups were Wrong. promptly removed once we learned of the issue. We appreciate your understanding as we investigate the cause of the issue, end quote. I'll tell you the issue. Some bean counter in corporate thought this would be a clever test case, hoping they could yep. slip it in without anyone noticing. That is, of course, a cynical read. But I think it's- I mean, how and why do you expect the, the test to go over well, bruh? Like, get your way out of here. Get more, bruh. Like, yeah, they always want to soft test the, the ads, the microtransactions, the friendly UAVs online in Call of Duties as well, the $20, $30 bundles. Um, Take Two Boss recently came out and did say that they, they do think that $70 price tag is like very, very low. That ass though! And Take Two Boss also, Strauss Zeldin also proposed the idea of hey man, we should actually allow renting for games. Uh, we should uh, charge people per hours played absolutely crazy what are we hearing what are we doing here though Yasuka's release games unfinished uncomplete soulless at launch filled with microtransactions and now you suckers are saying that $70 is not a good price it's very low Get your way out of here, bro. Want to draw a pretty clear line in the sand when it comes to this stuff. With streaming services like Netflix now selling ad-free tiers, I guarantee you that it's only a matter of time before game publishers start charging extra for ad-free versions of premium games. <laughs> and when that day comes, yeah! those don't give them ideas, bro. Don't give them ideas, don't. Ads are gonna look suspiciously like the one Ubisoft just flashed up here. So, you know, watch this ad space. Change your tack now. One thing I don't cover enough on this channel is regional pricing. Now, we get a pretty raw deal here in Australia with items being priced well above what Americans pay for them if you do a straight dollar to dollar conversion. But that's nothing compared to what a lot- Can, can I probably get two pennies? Of people in more developing economies experience. For many people outside of North America, Europe, and parts of the Asia Pacific, the price of gaming consoles and video games is so far beyond the realms of what is reasonable that yep. piracy is literally the only option available to people. Yeah, listen man, guys, uh, emergency meeting real quick. I'm not saying that you should pirate games, but I'm also not saying you should though. You feel what I'm saying? Bruh. I'm not saying you should, and I'm also not saying that you should not. At the end of the day, brother gotta get through sometimes though. Brother gotta be able to climb sometimes. Brother gotta do what a brother gotta do sometimes. You feel what I'm saying? Like the video if you feel what I'm seeing, okay? Because, bruh, like in Canada, games are a hundred dollars. A hundred dollars. In Australia, it must be like 110, 120. In, in Canada, it's like 90 Canadian plus taxes. So it's easily like somewhere around 105 Canadian. And that's for the standard edition. $500 console, that's easily 700 with taxes even more sometimes bro it is crazy it's wild out here dog most of the time that's because when publishers discount their games with region specific pricing it attracts people from outside those regions who are able to buy the games at a steep discount as a result publishers opt to not offer regional pricing at all which yeah it closes that loophole but it also means that entire markets are unfairly frozen out most recently that's affected turkey and argentina right now their currencies are particularly volatile for a number of reasons and as such publishers kept having to adjust their pricing valve offered up a solution to this just price these games in us dollars in those territories instead of local currency yeah yeah that's what we like huh 70 us dollars bro Next day you wake up, you find out your in your currency it's like thousands and thousands of dollars. Yeah, we love it, brothers. We love it. <laughs> yeah, this is absolutely sad, though. Yeah, man. You know what? Crazy idea. I'm gonna. I'm about to propose. <coughs> I'm about to propose a crazy. I'm about to propose a crazy idea, guys. Why not charge the game, charge our games with U.S. dollars? Wow, crazy shocker. Yeah, we love it. We love you, brothers. We love you. Yeah, absolutely. Which would remove the volatility. Makes sense, right? Well, yeah, if your goal is to stop selling games in those regions entirely, because this change has seen the price of most games go up by either a little oh or God. a lot. And when I say a lot, I mean upwards 29. of 4,000% increases in some rare instances. It's through 2,900, but okay, yeah, maybe this post article was posted on November 21st, so just like a week, two, two weeks ago. Today is the end of Steam, Argentina and Turkey floored by new Steam price hikes as high as 2900 
Oh my goodness, bro. Like, kill me now, bro. Like, I, I get it, bro. If you're in Argentina, Turkey, you probably don't even want to buy no games, so. <laughs> These more extreme examples are about publishers not inputting new prices, so it defaults to a direct dollar conversion. But most of the games that have been updated are now notably more expensive. A tough situation for people living in economies where the average annual income is just a few hundred US dollars a month. Yeah. These changes have led some to call this the end of. It is absolutely sad and ridiculous, though, guys. It's not. It's gonna. It's you're gonna feel very, very good about yourself right now. I'm gonna make you feel very, very good about yourself, even though like maybe you're going through. We all go through some. Uh, we all go through problems in life, and we're all gonna. Life is full of disappointments. But recently, I've been to Pakistan, right? Like that's my country and uh i'm gonna shit you not bro you just need if you're solo and uh, if you're alone right and, and you wanna just live life comfortably you just need like 300 canadian per month like holy shit right oh, shit. Oh, shit. yeah 300 canadian per month but if you're in canada brad you need like easily two grand two grand a month for solo if you want to live and even then you cannot live comfortably you're gonna be like your uh, your your ass is gonna be chained up though you cannot do much but in pakistan with 300 canadian you can live very modestly very comfortably if you have if you make 500 canadian and you live there bro you're living life like a king anything beyond that bruh like sick has got mansions there but another thing here is that most people do not make the most people do not make that much though most people are lucky to make a hundred usd per month not not even exaggerating though there are suckers that that are lucky to just make a hundred usd per month which is absolutely sad though you feel what i'm saying so if you come in 300 canadian that's easily gonna be like what 230 usd so you're already if you go in with the mindset of 300 canadian that's your you have double or oh, more than double of what an average person makes there so there are like different countries with that where, where they make a little bit more or a little bit less if you're really gonna convert their uh currency in uh, in us dollars so if you're making a lot uh if you're watching this on your in, on your phone right now if you're watching this on your phone you're lucky man you're god bless man you have an internet connection you're blessed you are blessed. Let's be real. I'm blessed. You're blessed. We all have our problems though. And I'm not saying that we should stay there. We should always be grinding. We should always focus on improving our lives and getting more, getting more, getting more. But I also got to understand that I've got to stay humble too, right? Stay humble, but always grind and always ask for more and always strive for more though. Theme in Turkey and Argentina, but it's really just one example of a problem that affects people the world over and that we don't talk about enough because there isn't an easy solution. Hopefully Valve and publishers can figure something out over the long term, but for now, I think most people in these markets are going to have to keep selling the seven C's. Moving right mm. along, I know we just got done reporting one drawn Fortnite? out corporate legal Bruh. battle that of Microsoft Bruh. v everyone in their quest to acquire Activision Blizzard King. But the corporate skullduggery never stops. And this week, Epic kicked off its antitrust lawsuit against Google. It started back in 2020 when Epic started selling V-Bucks to Fortnite's Android players directly, bypassing the 30% cut that Google demands if you transact on their storefront. A very common value since it's the same used by Apple, Valve, and other digital shop fronts. Google responded by delisting Fortnite from the Epic Game Store. Epic released a cringy video making out like BOMBO <laughs> CUT! We love it! We love it! There were we revolutionaries fighting Big Brother. And hey presto, three years later, the court case begins. Substantively, this Damn. is going to be the same battle that Epic fought and lost against Apple, with Epic arguing that Google's market position gives them an unfair advantage in price setting, and as a result, the overall market is less fair and less competitive than it should be. Google's response is likely to be something along the lines of, nah ah, and if history is anything to go by, then Google will win, but will likely have to make a few concessions along the way. For us, the best we might hope- You know what? I got a simple solution. Just make gaming free. Just make gaming free. Like the video if you agree. Like the video if you agree. That's that's a solution. I got simple solution. Make the games for free for everybody. Games for everybody and for for free for everybody. For out of like all this, the video some agree. juicy news crumbs falling off the table. Like the fact that at one point Google and Tencent discussed teaming up with the intention of buying Epic Games. This discussion was revealed in court documents. Apparently, the idea originated from Phil Harrison, which is obviously why it what? never came to fruition and was destined to fail from the start. Phil Harrison? Where is Phil Spencer though? I only knew they. I only thought they only had one Phil there. 
But guess not. Guess they had two fills. Uh, the idea was just the thought bubble bounced around in a few emails, but it's just one example of the sort of titillating tidbits that we're going to become privy to as these companies air their dirty laundry. I'll keep you posted on all of it. Bruh. A quick lightning round to finish off. Sony are being sued for 7.9 billion. <laughs> And, and this apparently is coming from the gamers, right? Oh shit! Yeah, oh, shit. apparently I, I heard about this. Like gamers, toxic gamers, that's what they like to call us as, right? That toxic and problematic gamers are suing Sony for $7.9 billion. And guys, listen, man, I hope y'all suckers win. And if you win, don't forget about your brown brother, though. As a brown man, I demand, can a brother get like two pennies or something like that? Million dollars. The claimants in a class action lawsuit alleging that Sony abused their market leading position to impose unfair prices on consumers. Are they talking about that $70 Last of Us Part 1 remaster? Because if they are, Agreed. I think they got a case. Looking at the final yeah. print, it appears yeah. to be centered on the fact that Sony doesn't permit third-party digital sales, so online retailers can't compete on price by selling digital editions of games for cheaper. Frankly, yeah. I hope this lawsuit makes some headway, since it'd be nice I if do. there I were more competition so. in the digital- I, I really, I truly hope so, gamers, man. I hope they deadass get sued, though. Like, deadass, though. Listen, I love Sony. I play on Sony ponies, but guys, listen. I ain't a Sony pony like that, bro. Like, I, I, I'm I, a fan of PlayStation, and it's okay to be a fan of PlayStation, but damn, though, like, when you get blinded by the consoles and you start treating consoles as gods, bruh, like, I mean, damn, though, at this point, you lost the plot, though. So, I hope that Sony gets sued like crazy, man. Uh, Xbox, I want... Uh, for now, I don't want Phil and Microsoft to get sued, though, because bruh. they haven't been that uh, anti-consumer. But $70 for a Last of Us Part 1 remake? Uh, and, and these suckers are already remastering Last of Us Part 2. There is zero need for that. But the reason there hasn't been that much controversy and the reason people are not mad and the reason I didn't make a video on it either is because, like, it's it's $10, right? Like, it's a, it's a $10 upgrade. Not saying that they should have been remastering it. Absolutely not. They shouldn't be remastering... Shouldn't have been remastering a 2020 game, though, for... But they are, they are, right? For $10, not a bad deal. But $70 for Last of Us, that's criminal, though. So I hope they get sued, though. The like the video, agree. But given that courts have recently upheld Apple's ability to do just this, a victory here seems very unlikely. Rocksteady have just announced an alpha test for the Suicide Squad. You can sign up over on their website for a chance to get in. It'll run yeah. from the 30th of November until the 4th of December. Rocksteady- Any of you sick is high for this game, though? Last time, like, I was excited, but then they saw- they showed the gameplay, and the gameplay was just, like, generic, though. It did Life offer service, an important man. disclaimer, quote, Please note, the game is still in development, and this test will only represent a smaller, specific section of the campaign. And Wrong! Run. Stop the cap! Whatever you get to play is gonna be the final game, bro. Nowadays, it, that, that's the truth. That's the honest truth, though. If you play the Call of Duty beta, that's the full game. You're playing the full game. If you play, like, these demos, you're playing the full game. It will not be representative of the full final experience, end quote. Wrong. Translation, Wrong. the cash shop and battle pass will be disabled and we'll get to see the exorbitant prices at launch. If you yeah, looked at Robocop yeah, yeah. Rogue City and said to yourself, <laughs> I'd buy that for a dollar, then you are not alone because the game has gone on to become Nacon's most successful launch ever. The game currently sits at 93% very positive on Steam and has sold over 435,000 copies. Been mm. a big year for Nacon with their movie tie-in releases. They Damn, there are like some... Uh... 35,000. Strong, independent. Mm -mm. <laughs> strong, independent. No need, no man. Damn, shorties be walking strong, independent styles and copies been a big year for nacon with their movie tie-in releases there was robocop and uh, what was the other one? Oh, that's right golem hard to imagine a more stark contrast Bruh. but that's the publishing business i guess you win some and you really really lose. really lose some others <laughs> The Witcher's original author, Andrzej Sapkowski, is kind of yeah. famous for being a bit of a cranky devil. And Yo, we gotta get a new Witcher game. They already confirmed that new cyberpunk game and new Witcher as well, right? Certainly reinforced that reputation this week when he was asked if he had ever played any of the Witcher games, which were, of course, based on his work. He had not. Quote, never. I have no time for this. And it's oh, not oh, entertainment for me. No, no, not since they appear on the market first. I never played it, never, and I do not intend to play it, end quote. Okay, well, it must be said what? that Sapkowski did sue CD Projekt Red, claiming that they underpaid him given the success <laughs> of the games, so I suspect that his feelings on the matter are about more than just his interest in video games. And finally, Larian have made clear that Baldur's Gate 3 Deluxe Editions are not limited, and stock levels are just fine and dandy, meaning that you don't need to buy it from scalpers. 
Okay. Do you guys think that Baldur's Gate 3 should win game of the year? Personally, I have not played. I heard nothing but good things about the game, right? And obviously, there was a massive controversy with Baldur's Gate 3 where Sega's were, uh, like, promoting the game and devs, those twats, they were big mad. Specifically, the Western devs, the woke devs, blue haired devs, uh, mm -mm, you are misgendering me. Those type of devs, they dead ass got mad over Baldur's Gate 3. Now, Baldur's Gate 3 is not my type of game. I, I did not play. I don't think it's appeal. it appeals to me, but I heard a lot of good things about the game. So, I mean, credit where it's due. And a lot of devs got mad as well. So, love to hear that. So knowing all that, do you think it should win Game of the Year? Personally, I would say I hope it wins a lot of awards, but Game of the Year, I'm not sure. I, I think if the game really des is deserving of that, I truly hope then it uh, wins. But I truly hope it wins a lot of awards because, man, the Western devs, they, they need their ass beat up right now in GTA, bro. In GTA, in GTA, in GTA. Because those devs are uh, happy with releasing unfinished games and they were big mad with Baldur's Gate 3 coming out complete and the devs, Baldur's Gate 3 devs just said that, bruh, we want to release the game when it's far finished, uh, although they released like, uh, I heard, like, early access, but, but they were respecting their fan base, okay, and this is what the Western devs don't like, those Sega's don't like, they are like, how do you respect your player base like that? So I hope it wins a lot of awards. Hey, that may be true for most people, but it's not true here in Australia because you're not shipping it to Australia, are you, Larian? For us Aussies, it's easier to get Taylor Swift tickets than it is to get a Baldur's Gate 3 Deluxe Edition. And you know why? It's because Tay-Tay cares about us. And that's why we love her so much. You be good to her, Travis. We don't need another breakup album. Thank you very much. So what got announced or delayed this week? Well, circling back to City Project Red for a moment, just this week they announced the Cyberpunk 2077 Ultimate Edition. Wow! It's less impressive than it sounds. I think the word ultimate- Is it also getting delayed though? Tell me it's not getting delayed. Tell or tell me, is it getting delayed? It conjures up image of some expansive anthology full of unique stuff. In reality, it's just the base game and the Phantom Liberty expansion in one package. Still cool, don't get me wrong. But I feel like Complete Edition would have been a more appropriate label. Agreed. Either way, this arrives Agreed. for all current-gen platforms on December 5th, and it will get a physical release in select markets. Oh, There's wow. a new Subnautica game on the way, and it's coming fairly soon-ish. This week, publisher Crafton said that Unknown Worlds were working on the next installment in their hit underwater survival series, and that we should expect it to arrive sometime in 2020. Yo, I forgot that game game's name, but it reminds me of that. I played with my friends. It was free. Basically, you go underground, uh, and you mine. It's like a mining game. I, I, I forgot the name, but this kind of reminded me of that. Five, which is... It was actually fun. Soon, was actually per fun. se. But it's certainly before we can expect the next Elder Scrolls game or whatever. Interested to see where they go with this one because the most recent entry, Below Zero, wasn't great. I feel like it was more of a spin-off than a sequel and it really missed the mark when it came to things like storytelling and even exploration. It was ambitious, but just not in the right ways, I don't think. Here's hoping Unknown Worlds can get the series back on track with this next release. Hey, here's something cool. Just as I'm out here complaining that we aren't getting enough RTS games, developer Petroglyph just patched Star Wars Empire at War so that it works on modern hardware. So if you haven't heard of this game, that's because it was released back in 2006. It was at a time when Star Wars games came from a variety of publishers and developers, a more civilized age, before the dark times, before the EA Empire signed a 10 year deal that turned the Star Wars games faucet hard to the left. Regardless, I'm not sure what possessed Petroglyph to drop this update, but it's super rad that they did. You can grab that right now on Steam. Okay, if you're next, Cold next. We're gonna next, we're gonna skip it to the PlayStation portal. I wanna hear his thoughts. Is the, is the homie man? Let's hear his thoughts. A week thoughts. quieter than a church mouse. We did get that Jurassic Park Classic Games collection. It was a hardware release last week though, and it was the PlayStation Portal, the dedicated remote play handheld that's being nicknamed the- Any of you, any of you actually bought the PlayStation Portal though? Because I look at it, it does look pretty good. Now, yeah, whoa, whoa, how, whoa. <laughs> Now, it does look pretty good to me because, like, I always imagine, like, a controller, like, a real controller, and then you have a LED screen and you can play. Uh, I know you wouldn't be able to fit perfectly in your pockets, so, uh, yeah, whatever, right? I truly hope for one day, for that day where would we would get, like, a normal PSP that you can fit in your pocket, and we also get, like, a, let's just call it PSP Pro, where we would have something like that where you have the controller enhanced, 
and the screen and you can play you have a bigger screen because they're gonna do ps5 pro why not do psp pro and this would have been amazing had it been you didn't need to have the ps5 because you need to have ps5 in order to play this otherwise it's not gonna work otherwise it's like completely useless that's the only thing that i didn't like i i know the battery is low <laughs> yeah we can criticize in million ways but the biggest uh, criticism that i've seen across and it's coming from myself included as well is that you need you need a ps5 guy like my guy bruh like i mean bruh y'all think it's gotta release a psp day, uh one day though like a real one man dad station since it'll let displaced dads keep doing their thing after the kids kick them off the tv so they can watch coco melon for four hours straight so the reception to this has been pretty positive for the most part though it is a little complicated to talk though? about so this device is made for a very specific use case remote play and remote play only if you are buying it for that purpose chances are you're going to be pretty happy with it yeah. since the excellent yeah. controls screen quality and wi-fi performance i mean for the the niche uh it's targeting it's actually a very good thing but but it's like the rest of us that are like hey man like can a brother get psp they would be big disappointed it's a big disappointment deliver exactly what's advertised however there's another category of consumer who aren't looking at what this thing is and are instead focused on what it could have been a device that might have let you cloud stream games using sony's cloud streaming service that a would device have been that might have supported wi-fi 6e for lower latency a device with a web browser allowing you to log into public wi-fi networks a device yeah. with bluetooth audio support instead of having to buy a new set of earbuds or earphones the list goes on bottom line yeah if only like it acted like hey man if it only i mean it would have been a million times better if, if it let you play cloud games and you could have played playstation now games and other games but you need playstation 5 in order to play all of those games if only you didn't need a playstation 5 for it it would have been just way way better and now if you have a genuine need or a desire for a premium remote play experience then yeah this will likely make you happy but sony left a lot on the table with this device and if yeah. any of those shortcomings are important to you then this probably isn't going to be worth the 200 us dollar asking price okay what? so what's coming out this 200 dollars oh, usd Nah, bro, say you swear to God, bro, 200? Damn, bro, that's hell expensive, bro, that's hell expensive, and before you were like, oh, get your bread up, bro, get your... Listen, I'm in a very fortunate position, I can afford tens of those right now, okay? But nah, bro, it's not worth that price, it's not, for even for remote play, it should have been, dog, like, okay, $70, I believe, is a controller, or 60 USD, I'm not sure, let's make it 70, right? It should have been like a hundred USD, a hundred. But hey, man, you already know, right? I can go to China right now and I can buy it for two pennies, bro. This week, well, those bruh. Xbox ports for June Spice Wars and Roller Drone dropped today. Be sure to grab them on Game Pass if you haven't already. Wizardom arrives exclusive to the PC tomorrow. It's an Apogee game and it has a suitably retro throwback vibe. A boomer shooter set in the Harry Potter universe. Not what? really, but it does have wizards and you shoot things from your hand, so that's close enough. Hexen it ain't though, since it's got more than just the color. Yeah, the, the Minecraft on display. A fairly vibrant color palette, in fact. This is an early access launch, so be sure to set your expectations at the right level. Oh, and there's a demo out right now, so you can try it before you buy. Apogee keeping the whole shareware tradition alive. Gangs of Sherwood, huh? So I hadn't heard about this one until a little while uh, ago. Like, I don't know about these games, bruh, but where is GTA 6 though? Where is oh, GTA 6? We're hearing new GTA Online DLC drops on December the 12th. And suckers are expecting that something's gonna happen today, December the 1st. Uh, maybe like an announcement, maybe like, maybe like a tease and then trailer probably by December the 5th. Although some believe that it can happen on the 7th at the Game Awards. But some don't wanna believe that, even myself included. Because knowing Rockstar Games, they like to reveal shit on their own. And I do believe that they wanna reveal GTA 6 on their own. But is that really gonna happen? That I am not sure though. I truly hope that the trailer comes either before game awards or after the reason i don't want it at the game awards is because like if it happens like at least in the very beginning then man i'm gonna stop streaming suckers don't even gonna care about uh the streams no more they're not gonna care about the game awards everybody's gonna focus on gta 6 at that point and if they do not reveal gta 6 before the game awards then you better believe everybody's gonna be expecting the gta 6 trailer at the game awards i i hope that it comes before i hope it really comes out on the on the fifth if not i hope Towards the end of the Game Awards, that would be better than releasing it in the beginning.
then because every, nobody's gonna care for it after after that after seeing that right or a day after the game awards but the salt would be truly real if it doesn't happen before or at the game awards but yeah i hope it happens before or after let me know your thoughts click on this video on the screen we recently had the entire map leak of gta 6 we had a full-blown walkthrough of that uh is is the map really big enough for that lucia burnout to be carried around find out in this video check it out and i'll see you right there